here I go again. Another 3 a.m. recording session. This one could have been completely avoidable. Today's culprit is myself, once again. And... Oh, it's too late. I'm blanking. What's it called when you when you help out a criminal? Um, not a suspect. You know, like a partner in crime. The partner in crime for today was Twitter. Twitter and YouTube videos, but really, Twitter. So the YouTube videos, yeah, yeah, I probably should have avoided those as well, but but it was Twitter that really distracted me at the end of the day. Or I should say, I let myself get distracted. Let me talk about Twitter for, you know, 15 minutes or so. <sighs> At best, it's a distraction. At best. At worst, it is... Oh, I don't even know. I haven't delved that deep. Could you find something useful on Twitter? Potentially. Could you learn something? Potentially. Or are you going to see more... I'll say bad than good. Yeah, I don't really want to say that, but for lack of a better word, bad than good. Are you going to see more bad than good? Are you going to see more distraction than focused content? From my experience, absolutely. Yes, you will. And that's really no good to anybody. I remember hearing about... <clears throat> it's a little story, right? A Muslim sheikh, I think that's what you'd call him, a sheikh. It's like an older Muslim gentleman is in the temple or um, the mosque. Excuse me, I'm not a Muslim, so I, I don't know the terminology. And he tells the young Muslims, by the way, have you heard of this app, TikTok? You must download TikTok. You simply must. There's nothing else like it. You could learn so much. And all of the young men looked at him, bewildered, completely confused. Like, what am I going to learn on TikTok? That's the whole story. Maybe there was an... I'll, I'll add a different part to it. I don't know if this was part of it. I, I don't remember. One of the young men tells him, well, he asks him, like, old man, for lack of a better term, what are you saying? How is TikTok beneficial? How is TikTok educational? How is TikTok going to help you? And the old man says, I downloaded this app and, or, or my kid, you know, downloaded this app for me. And I see all these beautiful things. I see these people making science projects. I see them, you know, cooking, showing off recipes. I show them, I see them teaching others. I see them celebrating the religion, reading the Quran, 
I see them praising God. I see them doing all these beautiful things. And what's interesting about that is, in a way, even the algorithms, even the content that we watch is just a reflection of ourselves in a certain way. That's all it is. If you're the type of person who takes no interest in, you know, big booty, um, <laughs> I'm going to use a, uh, a phrase that one of my mentors would use, big booty thong back girls, right? These like half naked girls dancing around on the internet. If you're a person who has no interest in watching big booty thong back girls throw it back and uh, shake their chesticles at you, you're just not going to get that content recommended to you. The algorithm is actually quite smart in that it can tell what catches your attention and it could tell what doesn't. It could tell what interests you, and it can tell what doesn't. To a certain degree, maybe even more than you can. And so this old guy, even if he would get recommended, you know, like these girls dancing on TikTok, shaking their booty, a uh, freaking this, these pranks, or, um, I don't know, uh, junk food reviews, like garbage, garbage content. Even if he got recommended that, the algorithm understood like, this is no place in this guy's world. It just doesn't fit in. And so he would spend 15 minutes a day on TikTok. He would learn something new. He would, you know, have a great time. He'd close it and then it was out of his mind. Instead of, you know, scroll, 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 forever and ever, and just get recommended everything, and, you know, buy this, LED lights, freaking, um, it's like a vape, but it's just air, um, you know, like, all this junk, garbage content. All this stuff. The older generation actually watch the videos all the way through. That's something young people really couldn't relate to. Even I, like, I'm pretty young. I'm in my 20s, right? I'm in my early 20s, and I still, like freaking catch myself scrolling, doom scrolling. But I also watch the videos all the way through sometimes. A lot of the time, if I'm watching short form content, I'll watch it all the way through. Just because what's going to happen? A lot of times it is a waste of time. A lot of times it is junk content. That's what I get recommended. Like, 90% of the time. At this point, I think that's like 99% of the content out there is just recycled, freaking people playing video games, just garbage. Only like really a small percentage of it is actually going to benefit you in some way. But the algorithm knows what's going to catch your eye. What are you going to look at? What are you going to spend more time looking at? And Twitter is no different. So I may have spent, what, like two hours? Yeah, two hours probably on Twitter this this uh, early, early morning, the very start of this day today, you know, midnight to like 2 a.m. Yeah, that's on me. 
the algorithm knows what's going to catch my eye. Freaking conspiracy theories, uh, freaking, I don't know, drama, social media drama. Like, it knows. It knows exactly what is going to catch my eye. And it's still my fault for falling for it. I click on it. I read the comments. I freaking you know, watch the video or whatever. And that's on me. Full responsibility. It's a shame that I let myself go like this sometimes. It really is. And it's a shame. I know there's people way worse off than me. Like 16 hour a day cell phone addictions. Just never putting it down. Never putting it down. Glued. Absolutely stuck. Stuck. Can social media be useful in a very, very small subset of individuals in a very, very specific context? Yeah, it can be useful. However, for the absolute majority of people, if you were to make a generalization, is social media useful? The answer would be no. It's actually quite detrimental to most people. It draws your attention away from your own life. You get distracted. You make choices that you otherwise would not have made if you actually spent just a little bit of time thinking about it instead of making a rash decision at the last moment. And I'm speaking from experience, by the way. I've seen how people have been affected by it. My own parents. And again, this to a certain degree is my fault in that I did not keep them away from this stuff enough. Not like I'm their parent, but I knew the risk. And yet I didn't stop them when they wanted to sign up for Facebook, when they wanted to upgrade their phones when they wanted to, you know, do whatever. And now I see in my own parents, they get glued to their screen too. It's a shame. But the younger generations got it the worst. They are absolutely lost in this digital world. Yeah, I get lost in it too sometimes. I mean, like I said, I spent two hours on freaking Twitter today just scrolling. Not even on my phone, on my PC. And that's unnecessary. But I'm able to recognize that. What about the people who really grew up with it? I had it around for about half my life. What about the people who've had it for longer? They're gonna have it really rough and they're gonna have to figure it out for themselves because that's the only way anyone can figure it out. I can't save them from their own fate. I could try to help as many as I can but at the end of the day, it comes down to the individual. And I think that's a pretty good place to leave this one off. I did all my planks today. I did my push-ups, my squats, overhead press, deadlifts. And still, it took me a long time to get these videos out just because... I spent a lot of time, wasting time, 
instead of working on this, being productive. And now I got to make it a priority to get to bed. Thank you for watching.